It is 6.37 p.m. on Tuesday, November, November 4, 2025, tomorrow's standard time, of course. My name is Troy Torres, and I'm joined by National Weather Service meteorologist Brandon Eidlett. Good evening. Good evening. How are you doing, Troy? Good to be here. I'm I'm okay. I'm I'm a little worried either for us or for maybe the Philippines or Japan or Taiwan. So the Joint Typhoon Warning Center a few minutes ago upgraded Invest 90W to Tropical Depression 32W, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and, and you guys were saying that that was going to happen around this time anyway. So your forecast is so far on track. What what's going to happen here, and then what's going to happen after here? Yes, and so 32W, that means it's the 32nd tropical cyclone of the year uh, in the West Pacific Basin. And uh, so we've been watching the system on the satellite uh, all day today. It's been uh, struggling to kind of get into a really good uh, coherent circulation, uh, but it has been uh, it's been succeeding, it's been intensifying, it's been getting better organized. And so JTWC, they went ahead and uh, changed the posture. They put out their first uh, bulletin. And uh, so as of uh, 4 p.m. this afternoon, the 4 p.m. position, uh, it is about 9, 9.6 north, 142.9 degrees east longitude. Did you say 132.9? Uh, is that what you said? 142.9. Oh, okay. So that is uh, well to our southwest. And, and so that is a good thing for us. Uh, we've been noticing a, a westward drift uh, with uh, the main circulation center. And even a lot of the weather models that we've been looking at the past to uh, have been showing a bit of a westward drift. It comes to a halt uh, some point uh, tonight, tomorrow, and then it bounces up to the northwest. And so we see these types of motions. Uh, a lot of the global weather models have been showing it. And so the latest Joint Typhoon Warning Center forecast track reflects that behavior uh, and does have it coming out to a more of a stall later on tonight. And this would be a little bit to the east of Yap Island, and then it bounces up to the northwest and open into the open Philippine Sea, where it will then steadily intensify for the next several days. So it's going to miss us. Yes. And so that, that has been the trend that we've been seeing. And so the bigger concern was the backside peripheral effects. And so we've already got a trade wind surge up to our northeast, but uh, also uh, depending on how close the uh, 90W, now 32W, uh, passed to the southwest of Guam. We could see those stronger uh, stronger winds and, and then even uh, heavier rainfall. So the farther west the center pushes, the less likely we see those heavy showers uh, just setting up and just moving over us uh, for a, a lengthy amount of time. So that's a good thing. We're still looking at uh, increasing winds for tomorrow in a rainier pattern, uh, but the farther west it shifts, the better our uh, our outlook looks. Um, is there is the rain still going to start tonight? Sporadic heavy downpours. Well, looking at the satellite, we're still kind of in a dry wedge between both the tropical cyclone and then uh, the trade disturbance to our north. Uh, but the computer models do point to tomorrow afternoon uh, for the onset of more showers, and so that that still looks quite reasonable. So we're going to get more of a pleasant breeze tonight and early tomorrow. And then we'll start seeing those showers picking uh, picking up across the region uh, in the evening hours. The farther west the center uh, is, the better the outlook is for us and the less rain. Is that what you said? Uh, that and then the less uh, wind threat. So right now we've been carrying uh, 20 to 30 mile per hour winds, uh, peaking uh, the, the peak of winds, 20 to 30 miles per hour with gusts to 40 miles per hour. And this would have been uh, in the Wednesday evening through Thursday time frame. And that was based on this morning's uh, outlook. Uh, we, we're going to reassess those tonight with the latest uh, forecast track of uh, 32W and uh, maybe nudge those around a little bit. And, and I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, see a little bit of a drop in those wind considerations. What um what are the chances that it, this thing starts to move a little more east? That's uh, always a chance. Uh, I, I would say right now it's a very far outside chance, uh, a worst case scenario. And uh, it, Maybe more of the the outside worst case scenario, uh, looking at uh, a suite of probably a hundred plus different models and ensembles uh, that just does not show in, in the uh, forecast fields.
Okay, what uh, meteorologists across the globe, apparently, uh, according to posts all over social media, are talking about is how this is going to be the largest storm this year. It has all the um, all the functions, I suppose, of uh, it becoming a Category 5 super typhoon. Um, uh, all of it saying once it gets into the Philippine Sea, so that's west of us, right? So, I mean, I hate to Correct. be selfish about it, but uh, good for the people of the Mariana Islands, but... <laughs> So, but it's going to go somewhere. Um, where is this? Where is? Where does it look like it's going to go? Yeah, and and so the next five days, which is the current range of the the Typhoon Warning Center forecast track, it does point toward the northern Philippines. Oh gosh! But it doesn't reach the northern Philippines in five days. Uh, beyond five days, uh, the model guidance shows a bit more of a split and where it could go. And, and so we're we're talking about the day six to day eight, so and we, we and know so, a little bit more tomorrow or the day after about where it's going to go. A, a little bit more. So every day that five day uh, forecast goes a little further into the future, but uh, right now there there's a couple of options that we could see uh, 32W doing. One is pulling up farther north in the Philippine Sea and, uh, and weakening before it really crosses any. Uh, islands or larger uh, larger locations. Okay. Uh, but there's also the possibility it could curve more westward and head into the Philippines or toward Taiwan. So uh, folks in all those locations, keep a close eye on 32W and uh, where it does move in the next several days. Uh, computer models will go out 10 to 16 days into the future. Just be careful with those because sometimes they show the worst case scenarios. And, and one of those models just yesterday was suggesting a, a direct uh, passage over Guam. Uh, but that was an outlier uh, among the rest of the model guidance. And so sometimes what we see on our cell phones, that, that model uh, can be a worst case scenario for your location. But uh, we look at the broader context with, that is provided with the, the rest of the model consensus. Okay. Well, that sounds like a good news for us here in the Mariana Islands, uh, except, of course, for some dangerous road conditions and uh, maybe uh, the need to uh, maybe some flooding in low lying areas, maybe some uh, risk of landslides, things like that. Right. And that is all dependent on just where these showers develop and uh, how they move over the island. Uh, they're going to be moving fairly quickly, so that does help uh, reduce the uh, uh, the individual accumulation of showers. But should we get like a, a feeder band that just kind of consolidates and moves right over right over the island, uh, that's when we see the maximum potential for rainfall. And and those can't really predict them uh, a day or so in advance. You just start seeing that little convergence boundary setting up uh, in a in a in a matter of a few hours, and, and then it just comes up right over your location. But uh, that's the big concern for uh, low-lying areas, uh, just drainage. Uh, now's a good time, and, and tomorrow, of course, uh, now uh, will be a good time to make any preparations for uh, storm drains, if you have any of the drain pipes on your houses, um, on the roof. Sometimes mine gets clogged with a little bit of debris, and then you have that swimming pool on your roof. Not a good thing, but... Uh, any loose items in your yard, tarps, t uh, canopies, tents, uh, empty trash can, maybe put a couple trash bags in it, weigh it down a little bit. But otherwise, if it's empty, bring it in, secure it, and uh, just uh, prevent those loose items from blowing around. Thank you so much for your time, Brandon. I appreciate it. And uh, I appreciate that we're getting some good weather news today. <laughs> Better than Absolutely. And, and the biggest thing, though, is uh, with this system uh, to our south-southwest, um, the, it, it, the trends are improving for us. We're still going to have uh, windy, gusty, rainy conditions uh, anticipated for tomorrow into Thursday. and But we're never home clear until it is out into the Philippine Sea. So we're going to be watching that, communicating uh, around the clock on our webpage, weather.gov slash GUM. So we'll stay tuned. We'll ask everyone to stay tuned to weather.gov slash GUM and also to National Weather Service Guam Office's Facebook page. Uh, and uh, what we'll be looking for is that you guys tell us that the worst case scenario didn't happen. Yes, and that would have been a passage over Guam. So yeah. much better than that. All right. Thank you, Brandon. You have a great day or you have a great night. God bless. <laughs> you too. Okay. Bye. Thank you.